A long way from Tipperary is a St. Patrick's Day look at one of Ireland's best-known ambassadors I'm of genuine rambler, Irish music. I'm a gambler, I'm a long ways from home. If Liam Clancy, a modern-day troubadour, tells us of his roots and takes us on a tour of his birthplace. Ahead now, on Sunday morning... The voice of Ireland himself, Liam Clancy. To talk about Irish music, what better day to talk about Irish music is to talk about the Clancy Brothers, the men who put Irish singing, not to mention those Irish sweaters, on the map. I'm a rambler, I'm a gambler, I'm a long ways from home. The singer is Liam Clancy. If you don't recognize the name, ask your parents or even your grandparents. In this country in the 1950s, there were no brighter stars in the Irish sky than the Clancy brothers and Tommy Makem. After appearing on the Ed Sullivan Show, they were soon singing for the president himself. They recorded more than 50 best-selling albums. Singing songs of Irish rebellion and songs from Irish popes. Brothers Liam, Paddy and Tom Clancy, along with their friend Tommy Makem, filled concert halls across the country for decades. The, the, the crowds got so wild and they would hoist crates of beer up onto the stage and demand that we try and drink them. And of course you can't, you can't do that. No. It was a wild and wonderful time. With his brothers, Tom and Paddy, now dead, and Tommy Makem in retirement, Liam Clancy has just written his story in a memoir called The Mountain of the Women. It's a mountain, a beautiful mountain, not very big, not very high. It overlooked our town that nestled underneath it. And it was called Schlieve Naman. The town is Carrick on Shore in County Tipperary. This was our diving board here from the, the, the stones laid down by the, the Norman builders in the back of the year of 1447, I believe. This is the, called the old bridge. That's the new bridge down there. It's new because it was built in 1886. <laughs> this is the church that we were all baptized in. And my father, mother, brothers were laid out in this church. And uh, I was born in that room up there and my brother still sleeps in the bed that we were all born in. Eleven children were raised in the music-filled house of Robert Joseph Clancy and Joanna McGraw Clancy. Uh, well, this uh, is you and your hey, this is Bobby and his heyday. I was taking Liam's down older down. brother, Bobby, still lives there. Like most Irishmen, the Clancy's had strong feelings about the Protestant English who conquered and occupied this Catholic town. One night, early in this century, his grandmother, McGraw, announced to the British troops, the Black and Tans, that it was time to close the family pub for the night. Everyone, back to Paris, and who's going to pay up? And one of the Black and Tans cocked his pistol, and he put the gun to her head. And he said, what was that you said about payment, Mrs. McGraw? The implication was that if she demanded money, he would blow her brains out. All you freeborn men of the traveling people. Liam Clancy left Ireland in 1956 for New York's Greenwich Village. It's a chapter in his life he remembers well. Greenwich Village was an island to which people escaped from the, their repressed backgrounds, who had swallowed the directive to be inferior, to know your place, to kowtow to royalty, hierarchy, and all the other nonsense. In the back of the White Horse Tavern and other clubs, they sang and drank 
and sang again. A young musician named Bob Dylan remembered being starstruck by Liam Clancy. He was just the best ballad singer I'd ever heard in my life. Uh, it still is, probably. I, I don't think I, I can think of anybody who's a better ballad singer than Liam. Before the Clancy's, much of Irish music in America did not come from Ireland at all. It was written in New York. I think it, there was a time when, when Irish music to a lot of people was Tura Lura Lura and, and, uh, and Did Your Mother Come From Ireland and, and uh, that, that sort of thing. But that's not, that's not Irish music. Well, Tim, Tim Panali was a factory for turning out music. It was written for a specific purpose, to sell sheet music. And Schmaltz was very popular and very saleable. But it certainly didn't represent, represent the... Uh, the authentic Irish music, which came out of the history, it came out of the hardships, it came out of the joys and the loves of the people themselves. That march, my love, But much of that traditional music could be, well, a little dull. And I remember the ballad of Brennan on the Moor, who was kind of the Robin Hood of, of Ireland. And I was sitting on this big, um, fluffy couch, and I was saying to the lads, why don't we try and, and the couch was bouncing like that. I said, why don't we try and get the, the sound of a galloping horse into it, you know, instead of Brennan on the moor, ah, Brennan on the moor. Why don't we try it like this? Brennan on the moor, Brennan on the moor, he was brave and undone. It was young Brennan on the moor. That, that's the way we, we hit the song. The group did more than revolutionize Irish music. Those sweaters, uh, how did that come to pass? That, 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 was that, that was a... My mother got, felt sorry for us. She got three sweaters made to send us out as a Christmas present to her sons so that they wouldn't get their cold. Yeah, you see. And then she thought, I'm sure poor Tommy Makem is going to be cold as well. So she got a fourth one made. Their manager saw something else in the sweaters. A signature look. He said, that's it. We got it. We got He said, Marty, we're going to die in the heat. He said, die then. <laughs> It'll keep your weight down. This is perfect. Let us go to the banks of the ocean. A few years back on his birthday, Clancy caught pneumonia. In the hospital, he thought of a line from writer Nico Kazantzakis, who wrote Zorba the Greek. When a man dies, that particular vision of life, which is his and his alone, dies with him. It therefore behoves every man to tell his story. And by so story, at 66, he's off on a book tour to tell his story. I've been listening to you since I was a little kid. In New York, he met his old friend, the comedian Professor Irwin Corey. This is Richard. Yeah. yeah. Also a musician. And Sony Records has just issued a new CD, the best of the Clancy Brothers and Tommy Makem. After living in the United States and Canada, Liam Clancy and his wife now reside in the town of Ring, along Ireland's southeast coast. It's like the salmon coming back up the river to the place where it was spawned. You have to come back to where you came from. Long ago, I used to be a young man. And dear Margaret remembers that. 